This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. When I was a kid, I had a younger brother. I was the oldest. Now, if you've ever been the oldest, you know the uh, unmitigated hell that you can give to your younger siblings. And I did. I locked my brother in a closet. I would sneak up behind him and scare him. I would um, play tricks on him all the time. But you know what the old saying is, don't you? Every dog has his day. And turnabout is fair play. So, <laughs> one day, we, we were in this very, very solemn occasion. It was at a funeral. <laughs> And my little brother Greg was bound and determined to unleash on me the judgment I so richly had earned. And so while they were praying, my brother, I had my eyes shut, my brother reached back and slapped me on the back of the head right during the prayer. I yelled as loud as I possibly could, scared me to death. I still have chills just thinking about it. Completely unexpected, but it certainly, <laughs> it certainly did the job. My mother took me out, the, out of that room and proceeded to explain to me that that is not the appropriate action in a church building. And so I learned my lesson. But life can do that to us. We can we can really be surprised by life sometimes. Maybe not, because, maybe not for payback of tormenting your younger brother. But I don't know about you guys, but life has come out of the left field sometimes and really struck me by surprise. Things have happened in my life that I would, did not see coming. Things have happened in my life that actually shocked me and amazed me. And if I look at my past in my previous life, trust me, brothers and sisters... For the most part of my life, if you would have told me that I'd be standing in coming Georgia in a Greek Orthodox church wearing these robes, I'd have told you you were crazy. Yesterday we had a wedding here, the beautiful wedding here at the church, of uh, a young couple that had just converted to the faith um, at Pascha. And they got married uh, two weeks after they uh, entered the church. And the whole room was filled with evangelical Protestants, some of them former Roman Catholics. And I'm telling you what, we were outnumbered, I know, 40 to, 40 to 1. And to, in anticipation of their challenges, I took a few minutes just to explain what was going to happen. But even then, most of them came up to me afterwards and said, You know, Father, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This really surprised me. This really shocked me. But you know what was the, one of their main comments? Father, we were amazed at how much scripture you use. We don't even use that much scripture in our church. And I just, it's a sin to gloat, folks. It's a sin. You're not supposed to do that. So I repented real quick and did it anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were shocked and they were amazed by what they saw. And I said, folks, we've been doing this for 20 centuries. This is the way we, this is the way we do these things. This is the way we do it. Wow, we never knew. Amazing what you can discover if you put your mind to it. The reason I say all this this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is because of the words of the angel to the, to the uh, myrrh-bearing women on the day of Jesus' resurrection. Do not be amazed. Do not be amazed. And brothers and sisters, in our culture today, in our life today, in our society today, in our modern mindset today, we live, frankly... And I say this with tears, and I say it hoping that all of us will repent and look at the areas of our lives where this is true. We live in our modern age, modern American Christians in this culture live as functioning atheists. They live, we live as functioning atheists. Our faith does not inform our decisions about where we live, about where we work, about who we marry, about how we spend our money, about how we spend our time. We live as functional atheists. 
Though we pay lip service with our faith, to our faith with our lips, and we will attend church in Doxa Totheo, that's, bro- that's wonderful, that's great. But I don't know how many times you've ever pulled a rock from the bed of a river before, but no matter how much water washes over that rock, the, w- the water doesn't penetrate the rock because it's hard. The only time that water ever penetrates is when it's porous and it's open and it's willing to receive. But I've met people in my life who will spend their entire lives in church and yet they are actually functional atheists. They live as if there is no God. Our society is like that today. Our society is not formed and informed and educated and shaped and formed by the truth that God exists. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if God exists... Uh, by the way, can I one, run one rabbit trail? May I? You're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> I always get tickled when people come to me and say, Father, oh, I saw a weeping icon. I put it on Facebook so that everybody would... I saw a weeping icon. And then they get upset with me when I go, Oh, that's, that's nice. What? You're not excited about this? Well, of course not. Why would I get excited about Mary or Jesus or any of the saints crying? I'm a little actually concerned. Why are they weeping? But it was so amazing, Father. Why is it amazing? Why is it amazing when miracles happen? Why are you shocked when miracles happen? Why are you shocked when God answers your prayer? Why are you surprised when God comes through for you? Or shows you his kindness. Why is that amazing to you? Why is that surprising to you? Brothers and sisters, if this kind of stuff surprises you, you ain't paying attention. You may be a functioning atheist. Do not be amazed. Do you know what the fathers say? The fathers say that the mark of true spiritual maturity is, and I'm going to use this word, and I'm going to explain it to you a little bit, but I want you to think about it. The mark of true spiritual maturity, when you're really growing in your faith, is the gift or the the characteristic of apathia. Apathia, that's that's where we get... Tell me any word, I'll tell you, it's it's from the Greek. Any word, just give me any word. But we get our English word apathy from that. Now, apathy nowadays has a really lousy reputation, and yet the Greek understanding of apatheia is that no matter what my external circumstances are, my soul is at peace. My soul cannot be disturbed, my life cannot be disturbed by external circumstances. External surprises don't surprise me. External events don't catch me off guard. I'm not surprised when good things happen. I'm not surprised when bad things happen. I'm not surprised when happy things happen. And I'm not surprised when bad things happen. I'm not surprised. I have grown in my faith. I have matured in my faith. I have developed and exercised and disciplined my faith to the point that I am apathia. The truth that I know, watch this, The truth that I know is more powerful than the events that surround me. I want to say that again because this is the thing I want you to remember in this homily. The truth that I know, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, is more powerful than the events that surround me. That means that in good times and in bad times, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. In happy times and sad times, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Brothers and sisters, if physical mortality has been defeated by God, tell me what greater enemy is there to your life. Oh, but Father, you don't understand. I'm having marital problems. I understand that well. Father, you don't understand. I'm having financial problems. I understand that well. But in the end, ladies and gentlemen, every one of the problems that you're experiencing right now are infused with a death sentence. They are temporary by their very nature. They will not last forever. Your financial problems won't last forever. Your marital problems won't last forever. Your physical problems won't last forever. 
The only thing that's going to last forever is how you allow your faith in the risen Jesus Christ to inform your daily choices and decisions and your actions, how you raise your children, how you spend your money, where you spend your time, how you invest your life's gifts. What has God given you in your life? How are you using it for His glory? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, on this day of the myrrh-bearing women, hear the words of the angel. Do not be amazed. Don't be amazed. There will come a time when we will see clearly who are going to be caught off guard by their own mortality or the coming of Jesus when all of us stand before the awesome judgment seat of Christ and as we pray in every liturgy and every prayer service for the right answer before the awesome judgment seat of Christ grant this O Lord abandoning the sickness of living as a functional atheist while paying lip service to a faith we don't actually believe is a spiritual death sentence that will manifest itself in a million ways in your life. But it will ultimately manifest itself in you being amazed at the confrontation with God at your mortality. And I'm telling you this morning, children, you can live your life right now, today, on this Sunday of the Murbearers making the decision to allow the truth that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead to inform every part of your life and not just be a cultural decoration. To, in, to tell the rest of your life how to gauge your life, how to shape your life, how to form your life, how to live your life, how to spend your time, how to spend your resources, how to spend your life i tell you what, gang, I just turned 57 years old. And I know I've heard this a million times before. But man, I look back and wonder, where in heaven's name has 57 years gone? Where'd that go? When did that happen? And yet, the angel says to the myrrh-bearing women, don't be amazed. On this Sunday, the wisdom of your precious, timeless... By the way, gang, I told this to, the, uh, to our precious Protestant friends that were visiting, visiting yesterday. I said, gang, we're not really interested in something that's just old. We want something that's timeless. Do you know why? Because, brothers and sisters, all of you are going to live forever. You're going to live forever. God has granted eternal life to the human race when Christ is risen from the dead. The only question to be settled is, will you know how to enjoy it? This is where you learn how to do that. So we're not, list, we're not interested in something that's just old. We're interested in something that's timeless. And on this Sunday of the Myrrh-Bearing Women, the way for you to keep your life from being amazed and shocked and caught off guard and snuck up on is for you to start investing your everyday life with your orthodox faith. Your orthodox faith is a lifestyle gifted to the human race to make you like Jesus Christ. It is, in my opinion, actually that's not true. It is the teaching of the church throughout the centuries. This lifestyle of faith is the way for a human to be formed into the image of Jesus Christ so that on that last day, when I'm before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, Jesus will look at me and say, you know, you look just like me. That's the Father Barnabas translation. You look just like me. All of my, feet, all of my folks are over on this side with the sheep. Or you'll come to him and he'll say, I'm sorry, baby doll, I don't see the family resemblance at all. This is where the goats go. He was ears to hear, let him hear. This morning, set before you on this Sunday of the Murbearers, is the glorious joy of never being shocked and surprised by life again. Because Christ is risen from the dead. All your enemies are destroyed. 
All your weaknesses have healing. All your hopes are fulfilled. Let us forgive everything because of the resurrection. Christ is risen from the dead. And let us banish the sickness of living as functional atheists from now on. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.